best pro wrestling podcast. Listen up, wrestling fans. That's right, geeks. What I said was, stop talking. Shut up. We run this show like track star. I'm a holla player. Nerds. The new face of America wants you to do your job, Tom. Wrestlers. This is the best pro wrestling podcast where we talk about the best pro wrestling in the world. My name is Tommy Stryker. Joining me is Taco. What up? Joe is here as well. Yo. And this show is recorded Tuesday nights right after SmackDown during 205 Man, Live. Joe, you sound just excited as a movie Cars. <laughs> so if uh, starting early, if if guys get uh, if the guys get distracted or if I get distracted by something going on on 205 Live, it's because we've got we've got a a title match tonight between yes. TJP and Neville. So uh, that'll be distracting us in the background as well as uh, talking smack and everything else. But uh, we have a lot to talk about as uh, as we do every week. Uh, it's, 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 uh, what a week it's been. So much to talk about. <laughs> the best of the Super Juniors finals was awesome. Let's start. Let's actually start there because uh, I actually already I already recorded strong honor this week, so I got into detail about the the last two nights of the A and B block and how everything transpired going into the main event. So uh, let's 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 start with the uh, the the finals of the best of the Super Juniors, just because I think it was uh it's a it's a cool place to to start because it was it was really the best. So we'll get it in early, maybe for some of the people that aren't necessarily into the New Japan stuff, but because I want to talk to it, I want everybody to hear about mm. this Best of Super Juniors final. Uh, it was a great tournament and a great match to end the tournament, and it told a great story. It was the it was the uh, former IWGP Junior Champion who lost in January and had been losing to the, uh, the the current champion. Had his number, he couldn't get a win, and even early in the tournament, he was having trouble getting wins. That's Kushida versus uh, Will Ospreay, who went to the finals and won the tournament last year, versus uh, Taguchi. Mm -hmm. And uh, he has faced Kushida twice prior to this uh, Best of Super Juniors finals and has not been able to to defeat Kushida for the IWGP uh, champ- uh, Junior Championship himself. So Osprey 0-2, Kushida looking to get back in the title picture for the Junior Heavyweight title, and it was an awesome five-star match. Oh, absolutely. Uh, talk about uh, what you guys thought about the match, just in general. It was just a very, you know, back and forth competition, but it's just, you know, these guys know each other so well. It's, uh, you know, like you said, they've had two other showings against each other, and this was definitely the best showing they've done to each other. And fuck, the, just the, the overall, you know, story that's being told with these guys, too, has just been phenomenal. It's just like, you know, like you said, it's been a good, good story that was told. Fuck the stories, you know, it's still going. So right, it's right. so great. <laughs> right. I should mention Kushida did win with his back to the well he hits the back to the future from the second rope the uh the the package driver or a small package driver hits it from the second rope then hits it again to get the victory earlier in the match uh, osprey counters the 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 package driver with a uh a, a stunner that's just an insane match they're mm-hmm. they're hitting each other hard osprey is kicking kushida in the face in the corner i love oh, that oh, move so much and like I kind of, kind of got a friend of mine, kind of, you know, sparked his interest a little bit and showed him that in that corner spot. And he's like, "Dude, that's that's insane." <laughs> like, <laughs> he didn't know how to respond to it. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It's it's really great. Uh, so uh, Kushida does win. He will face uh, Yujiro, uh, not Yujiro, uh, Hiromu <laughs> Takahashi from Los Ingobernables de Japón at the Dominion Show coming up this weekend, July or June 11th. Excuse Isn't me. he the one that won the belt from Kushida too? Yes, that's yes. why it's like, yeah. And that's yeah, that's the, the story guy continues. That Kush- that's the guy that has Kushida's number. So that's the big question: Can Kushida, after 
uh, overcoming the odds, winning the tournament. Uh, can he defeat uh, Takahashi and get the IWGP Junior title back? Uh, that and a ton of other great shows at Dominion uh, this coming. Uh, it's this Sunday. So, I mean, mm-hmm. you've got the Okada versus Omega rematch. I think they have the card out now, too, to be honest. Yep. As a matter of fact, I, well, since I was talking about it on Strong Honor, I've got it here. On my phone Fucking here. look at this professional motherfucker right and, here. Uh, as soon as I, well, on it. Very professional as soon as it takes me five minutes to get the thing Well, that's up. why I was just going to try to keep complimenting you till you found <laughs> it, but you busted my bubble. <laughs> uh, it was easier earlier. And well, I think throwing it, in on the final is. match, I will just throw out just yeah. that with Offspray and a couple of certain guys, they have their spots, and I feel with a tournament style, you could get bored. They took every... every you know, spot that they've had and turned it up that extra notch, like really right. showing why they should be in the finals. That and the the story that the tournament had told itself too, just Kushida with the early losses having to come back and everybody tied in his block at six points. Yeah, and the same tough. thing with, with Osprey too. You know, a lot of different guys had had that eight point mark and it was important for guys to make it to ten points. Ricochet almost made it but got upset by Marty Skrull. I should th- those two had like a four and a half star match, Osprey or Ricochet and Marty Skrull. And then the, from also from the uh the A block finals, I got it way deep in my notes here, but uh the uh what was it the uh, uh, Osprey versus Hiromu Takahashi, the current IW champion. Uh, for Osprey to get the win, to, he had to beat the champion. So mm-hmm. Osprey has that that big win over the champion. So even though he didn't win the tournament, he has a right to, to challenge for the IWGP Junior title at some point, having beat the current champion. So lots of different storylines and fun stuff to talk about in the tournament. Um, the fun part about the tournament for me, and maybe I wouldn't have done this if I didn't have this podcast, but even if you don't do a podcast, I would encourage people to get the match lineups of the tournament before it comes out. And you can do this with this one, the G1 Climax coming up later this summer, and any tournament. Do predictions for it and follow it along like a sport and just like pr- compare what, uh, what, what your, your predictions to the results. And, it's, and, and then following, following the results in these round-robin tur- tournaments are fun too because you look at the points and, okay, what does this guy have to do to make it and what are the tiebreakers? Mm-hmm. It's just really fun. To, it also to, gives you uh, more appreciation too. You look like something like the WWE product and kind of the storylines they put together and it's really easy to nitpick it but then you look at New Japan with these tournaments and it's just like the thought and the details that they're doing to you know on who wins and who has to for the points it's like my fucking mind couldn't boggle doing that backstage and try to figure out the shit out. I'm sorry. 205 Live is on. I'm like, little Rusev is just like beating right? the shit out of Mustafa <laughs> Ali. Who is that guy? Uh, Louis v- Valle. Wow, okay. Interesting. I'm, I'm sorry. Getting back. No, it's okay. He's tiny. Looks, he looks like if Rusev, Taz, and Roman Reigns ran really hard at each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got that right. That's for sure. <laughs> That's right, geeks. Uh, so Rusev suplex. <laughs> so uh, Dominion coming up this Sunday. Big show for New Japan. Like I said, uh, Hiromu Takahashi defending against Kushida. The never open weight championship. Minoru Suzuki defending against Hiro Okigoto in what they're calling a lumberjack death match. <laughs> so Ooh, someone's gonna die. But that's uh, I talked about this on Strong Honor as well. It's a fun dynamic because you've got all the Suzuki gun bullshit that went on in the tournament, and so now you've got other lumberjacks out there to counter that that stuff and, and to keep the peace, maybe. So, But it, it'll, it'll look like a, a very interesting dynamic. The IWGP Intercontinental title being defended uh, by Tetsuya Naito. Of course, there's not much of a title left. The title's all busted up. The belt is, that is. Uh, defending against Hiroshi Tanahashi. The IWGP uh, heavyweight title Kazuchika Okada defending against Kenny Omega, the rematch from January. Uh, so much awesome stuff to look forward to on this card. Uh, another big match uh, lower on the card, Michael Elgin versus Cody Rhodes. Uh, interesting. Yeah. interesting dynamic there with the the... With the, what's coming up with the G1 in the USA shows July 1st and 2nd, uh, and Michael Elgin's association with Tanahashi, the possibilities that Tanahashi might win the IWGP Intercontinental. Does Cody get a win over Michael Elgin and then face Tanahashi at G1 in the U.S.? Mm. 
interesting Ooh. possibility there. Good line up there. So some people are speculating that 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 Cody gets a win and goes for uh, Okada's title or, or Omega. Well, Cody wouldn't go after Omega, both being in the Bullet Club. Mm-hmm. But uh, an interesting dynamic uh, d- dynamic there, anyway. Uh, so that's pretty much uh, the New Japan I'll cover here. If you want more New Japan, I go over a lot more stuff. And uh, Ring of Honor, of course, on Strong Honor on the Fans Podcast. Dot com. Joe. Question. Have either of you been following this giant YouTube tournament from What a Culture? The giant, uh, God, I can't even remember the name of it. All I, all I know is What Culture is in trouble financially because they were putting out a basically a weekly TV show on YouTube and they were making a lot of money until YouTube changed Well, their they've policy. cut that out completely. They're still putting on the shows that they've guaranteed, okay. but they're not. Because of the YouTube deal, they aren't going to be able to do the free weekly YouTube show. I feel like YouTube changed their policy, though. Right? They well, they cha- they changed what they what they they have categorized rest anything pro wrestling as non advertising. No, I friendly. think they took that off the list. Oh, did they? I think so. Maybe they or maybe they're categorizing. Try to dig things. up the article and retweet it. Or but something. either way, I was saying Michael Elgin actually has a match in that. I didn't. I, I only got a couple minutes into a cup just check just see, seeing that there's this giant okay. tournament going on. But I highly suggest there's a lot of good wrestlers in this tournament. Yeah, too. is it that that giant like hundred person? Yeah, it's like hundred and eight dudes. Yeah, I haven't. I've heard about it, but I haven't had any. I haven't checked out anything. What culture? Yet. I've just seen a couple of things about the YouTube stuff and whatnot. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that'll, that'll be interesting to check out. Well, speaking of, of news, I guess, let's just go right in, since we started with New Japan. <laughs> let's start, let's let's shift into the oh, news. 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 We have quite a bit of news for you. News. 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 Unfortunately, news. it's like quite obvious that I am completely uninformed. I don't know what's going on with the, the what culture and the YouTube stuff. Well, I know that... Uh, what culture was going to put on like a live show and they made like a, a logo for it that was kind of mocking the YouTube logo and YouTube said, uh, nope, you can't do that. You can't live stream anymore and fuck you all the way to town, basically. So if, yeah, if, they gave him a strike as if, far as if, I know. If, since, if things have changed since then, that would be big news, but I haven't, uh, I haven't seen anything and Taco is digging furiously right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just disappointing too because these guys, like, honestly, I started watching their, they just had countdowns, basically, or top tens, you know, different lists for wrestling, sometimes movies, wrestling movies and stuff like that. And I just started watching it for fun. And they were actually well put together. I enjoyed their stuff. Right, right. And they just expanded exponentially. And I think that I personally think they just expanded too fast. Right, that's definitely, and that's one of the criticisms too, is that they were relying heavily on advertising mm. revenue to pay wrestlers rather than you know selling shows and, and doing things in a more traditional way. So, well, and that was one point that the that I can't remember his name, but the leader of WCPW, he did a statement at one of the live shows, and basically stated. Like made it a point to point out that he always pays his wrestlers, oh, kind sure, of sure. thing. So, well, yeah, the the big names that they're bringing in, they're not going to go do that show unless they've got some, mm-hmm. you know, a guaranteed payout or at least you know a a, a, a strong likelihood of, of a payout. So, well, I'll try to become our what a culture, you know, agent. I'll start digging in pretty hard. And the internet's yelling at you. It's just what culture? You nope, know, what a culture. There's no a in the middle there. What a culture. What a burger. <laughs> um, it's the way he says it. It's not my fault. He has an accent. So, so, uh, what's this Ric Flair news that you guys were telling me about? <laughs> he he got into a fight he, at a... He went to uh, game one between uh, Cavs and uh, Golden State, and apparently fucking some rowdy. You know how these fucking fans are for these two teams. You know, Golden State fans being all rowdy and shit. Apparently, Flair's a big old Cavs fan, Whoa! and he had to fight some fans off. Broke Whoa! his pinky. <laughs> he busted his pinky up. Busted huh? his pinky up. Wow, interesting. I know, it's fucking newsworthy. <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, you guys mentioned briefly as we were getting ready for the show that uh, there's some new uh, female signings. Is that was that I, WWE for the tournament that's coming up? Probably. I think it's part of the developmental. I think uh, okay. yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Rosita Rosetta okay. from TNA. Rosita, Rosita. <laughs> uh, Tr- Rosetta Trinidad Stone. or something like that. I think she got signed on. Okay. So, okay. You know, a couple names being thrown around, and you know, a couple of those girls still from Japan, and whatnot, too. So, yep. yep. Yeah. You know. Um, they want to break down the um, the Romans tournament, so you know we're going to start seeing names get signed on for it. Right on, That's around right the corner. 
All right, we've we've stalled and buried the leads long enough. We should get into uh, what happened on Extreme Rules and uh, Monday Night Raw. So let's talk about that. The Monday Night Raw. You mean kind of extreme rules? <laughs> yeah, slightly, kind <laughs> of, soft. maybe a little bit extreme they, rules. They, it was it, it was extreme rule changes, or we are making extreme uh, stipulations to the <laughs> normal rules. That's kind of what happened. Yeah. Uh, so I overall the show to me just kind of felt disappointing. I loved the main event. Loved yeah. Samoa Joe getting the win. That match, just in general, I thought uh, was very good. Uh, Samoa Joe and, and Bray teaming up uh, at different points th- throughout the match, and then Bray Wyatt tr- kind of trying to get one in on Joe late, uh, and then just you know, uh, but Joe eking out the uh, the win with the coquina clutch on Finn, uh, uh, yeah. putting him to sleep, as it were. So uh, what yeah. happened to it dropping the arm three times though? <laughs> See, I I like the new way because it's, it's <laughs> no, I do I too. Thought the, but I thought the same thing. I I, I, I hope we don't ever <laughs> see the three arm thing again. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, Miz versus Ambrose in the opener for the IC title. Uh, you guys wanted to see the title back on Miz. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't like the match. I was, I was, I was, I was, I was borderline Titusing the match. Really? <laughs> yeah, I actually thought it was the best showing between the two. I was entertained. It was a good, you know, if this if this match would have happened like right before the main event or later on in the show, I definitely would have been snooze fest, but. Nah, I thought it was a good fucking way to start the show. See, and I'm like right in between. I mean, I I, I agree with yeah, Taco that it was a cars. decent. Like, you know what? Fuck you. Taco. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I agree with Taco that it was like a decent match. I just don't care about these two at all. So I'm on Tommy's side as well. <laughs> I did like uh, the touch of Miz and Maurice uh, trying to taunt Ambrose into disqualifying mm-hmm. himself. Uh, the bit at the end with the with the referee th- the threatening to. D- disqualify Ambrose walking around the <laughs> ring. The entire ring. And Ambrose just com- pleading his case, acting like an idiot, getting sc- skull-crushing uh, skull finale and uh, yeah. See, I, I would have liked that ending if the referee didn't have to walk across the whole arena to get back <laughs> to be like, I think I might do this. Well, then he, I like that Miz, the Miz actually hit his finisher and got the pin because we thought he was going to do some bullshit, you know, with Maurice, <laughs> and then they did, and they still, you know, acknowledge that. So it was like, I did, I did like the. Well, it took him what were ten minutes for Maurice to finally get involved. Well, why didn't Maurice just run in there at, after the opening bell and you know <laughs> start start flailing on Miz, attempting to get the DQ? Did right? you happen to watch a uh, uh, Raw Talk afterwards. Raw Talk, yeah. yeah. Well, th- that was the thing is they were so obnoxious on Raw Talk. That's I, their characters, though. It's but so I completely. Great. <laughs> I'm just like whatever. I like fine. Like it was entertaining when they were like berating Daniel Bryan and going back and forth. But them oh, just but fucking the horror, oh, like the it. look and the expressions on a uh, um, fucking what's her face, uh, Renee's face is just. She sells that shit so good on those top yeah, segments. And that, you're, you're right. The actually the interaction between her and 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 them with the uh, with the obvious relationship with, with uh, Dean Ambrose, I thought some of that was good. But then after like a, a couple of minutes, I'm like, okay, fine, I get it. This you're going to go on and on and on and on and on <laughs> and on, and I just I couldn't do it. But uh, uh, what did you think? Oh, so, so Monday on Raw, uh, Ambrose wants his wants his rematch. Uh, Angle says no, no. M- Maurice has got this big celebration planned. I don't want to deal with her, so you're taking the night <laughs> off. Please leave the building. I'm not asking you. Uh, as he said, he goes away. We do the thing later. Uh, he s- quote unquote sneaks back in <laughs> with, with a camera on him, and Michael Cole's like, "Look, it's Dean Ambrose back in the building." You know, <laughs> so, but it's it, it, it's funny because. It's it's dumb and it's the dumb backstage skit thing. But again, as soon as Angle tells him, "No, we're going to have this celebration, and you have to," we know it's coming. Mm-hmm. It's just a matter of how they do it. And so, yeah, it was kind of dumb and silly and, and obnoxious how uh, he snuck back in. But I liked the, the actual <laughs> celebration itself. Right. The, uh, the the dancing bear or whatever the celebration bear, <laughs> just being just a jaybrone. Uh, Miz attacks the big gift, and Maurice freaks out. It's a grandfather clock. Also a nice touch, and then Ambrose dressed as the cameraman. I did enjoy uh, <laughs> that. Uh, Glad he wasn't dressed as a janitor. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. Uh, then it was Rich Swan and Sasha Banks versus Noam Dar and Alicia Fox. The baby hurrah, faces win. Hurrah, yep, that's, that's, exactly. Ba- okay, 
Bailey versus Alexa Man, Bliss. Bunch of haters over here. Do you have something good to say about Sasha jumping off the turnbuckle? Like, I'm yeah, dar. that I'm was dar. a good That's spot. Cool. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, that was. I, it's just I, I like that they're actually bringing someone in to 205 to kind of work with them a little bit to kind of because you know we're still on the stepping stones for the the crew or the the. 205 Live right now in the Cruiserweights, you know, they're still finding the rhythm, the groove, they're still developing these characters and these situations, so I actually do like that uh, uh, Sasha Banks is in there playing around with them a little bit, it adds a little bit more cred to them, and, you know, we're not seeing the same shit over and over, you know, let's put the same fucking Cruiserweights against each other in a tag match every fucking week, no, they're bringing <laughs> someone else in, and, you know, maybe, you know, eventually we might be able to bring in, like, a, um, uh, fucking um, uh, Enzo in, or you know, I even like the fact that uh, Titus was telling um, uh, Tazawa to watch. You know, you could be my, you know, my new item. So, <laughs> you know, I kind of like how they're kind of, you know, weaving in and out between the two a little bit. A little yeah, bit. Titus is a ratings monster. Yeah, I'm tuning in to 205. Hey, if Titus is on. Hey, there. I'm just saying, Apollo Cruz has never been this entertaining before. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good point, Taco. That is tremendous analysis. All right, we got to talk Bailey versus Alexa Bliss. Do we have? Dude. Yeah, really, dude. We don't. We, <laughs> we don't. I mean, it, what was it, it? Five minutes? It was a burial. Uh, Bliss, Bliss wins at the DDT out of nowhere. I commented on Twitter. Uh, Bailey is just a soft loser now. I She's mean, just what? a loser. Yeah. She has been a loser. Yeah. I mean, well, <laughs> no, she was a winner at WrestleMania. She beat Charlotte for the for the pay per view <laughs> streak. She's just been presented awfully. They don't know what to do with her. I have an idea. And my tongue is firmly planted in my cheek here. But I saw this. Uh, I was I was on Twitter, and I wish I could find. I couldn't find it again today. But I saw it was like an indie show somewhere. I have no idea. I don't remember. I couldn't find the tweet. But it was for there was a women's match on this indie show, and one of them was you know you're the, the 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 bulkier lady somewhere between Nia Jax and Beth Phoenix, and her opponent was this uh, this bratty looking girl brunette, mm-hmm. and for her promo photo. For this poster, she's just staring down at her phone. <laughs> <laughs> and so Bailey's character is the girl who never grew up, right? So what if she starts growing up? She starts to not like pro wrestling anymore. She doesn't give a fuck about <laughs> anything. She's on her phone. What if what if we move Bailey into that gimmick? It's a horrible idea for she Bailey. She needs but something though, but it's it, something different. It, it's like when you're sitting there, like I study on the network. I watch Sandman and Steve Blackman, and and you can't pull the fucking trigger why are you in this business get the fuck out like it just made her look so fucking stupid wait a minute steve blackman (laughs) (laughs) here we go go. shut up (laughs) (laughs) all right uh shazaro versus the hardys shazaro get the tag titles uh put on them the uh finish was awful i hate these tag ma- or these uh cage matches where you the the, the, the well the, the escaping out the door sucks anyway uh <laughs> there shouldn't be a door or if there is a door you only use it before or after the match so escaping out the door i was sucks. so happy when they said no pinfalls no submissions yeah. escape only yeah, I, I guess I, I, I can see that. See, I don't like the pinfalls and shit in a cage match. To me, it should be escape only. I don't not, like escape, but at not all, with so. the door though. It should be over the top, like old fucking cage days. I can, I can, I can see some of that. Uh, but the the, I, the, the, the the contrived finish where uh, uh, Shazaro are hanging onto the cage on the other side and waiting for Matt to drag <laughs> Jeff across the ring and make the dramatic finish. Like, we're waiting over here. Just <laughs> get a little closer so it's a little more dramatic. Cameraman, quick, flip, back and forth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but other than that stuff, I, I shouldn't, I'm kind of shitting on the match. The, I enjoyed the, the, the match for what it was. These two mm-hmm. teams just work really well yeah. together. Neville versus Austin Aries. Neville does get the win with the uh, uh, the uh, after the Red Arrow. So glad I changed my answer last week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought I thought Aries was gonna was gonna pull it out here, but uh, uh, didn't quite happen. They I call out. that co-main event too, giving them decent time right before the main event. Yeah, and it was a, it was a good match. The crowd was shitting on it. That took away from the energy for me. I just think um, people aren't used to submission matches. You're not getting your one, two, threes. You're not getting anything. It's exactly what I talked about last week. It's going to be hard to build drama without near falls and uh, like like I and people that are that watch a lot of matches with submissions mm-hmm. in them and you know, guys like me that watch the Super Juniors tournament. I I was into it. It was a good match, but the crowd is just not used to seeing that kind of work. 
And so without the, the, the it, typical drama. It takes doing matches like this to get to that point, though. Right. You know, like uh, Jericho was talking about the cruiserweights back in the WCW days. No one gave a fuck about them, really. And you had, you know, Dean Milenko. You had Jericho fighting Guerrero. And nobody really gave a shit back then about those guys. And, you know, that's kind of where we're at with this cruiserweight division. It's the like, difference he, between then and now, though, is the guys in WCW, they, they, they let them go out there and they let them do whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, they gave them a finish or whatever, but just go out there and have your have your match. And that's how they got over. The problem with, with 205 Live in this cruiserweight division is that everybody wrestles the same way and does the exact same TV match. You well, know, that's so just the WWE style. Right, and that, that's the problem. That <laughs> is the problem, and that's why that's why the cruiserweights aren't getting over. Mm-hmm. That and not to mention the, the fact that, uh, I mean, if you have true superstars, uh, they're just going to get over and, and be a, a, a main roster uh, type of person. So uh, if... Uh, like a guy like Finn Balor, Austin Aries when he was in TNA, mm-hmm. guys that would normally be associated with cruiserweights, but they're so good and so over, you can just put them with the regular roster. So that in 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 and of itself is why Neville is kind of the shining star of the cruiserweight right. division. Same thing with Austin Aries, and why, quite frankly, TJP has it worked out. He's decent in ring, not good personality. He's a big old star in his ass. <laughs> <laughs> So there's that. Uh, and we talked about the main event, Samoa Joe getting the win of a f- fun match there. So uh, let's a talk. a bunch of dudes beating the shit out of each other. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so from Raw, Roman versus Bray, the opening match. I like this. It was, it was like the main event put on first. <laughs> uh, what would you guys think of uh, Roman beating Bray with the Superman punch and the spear? Uh, Bray says he's still a god. Everyone else is guilty and must be punished. And they... Uh, uh, have the match, they fight before the bell, the match begins, and then they go to commercial. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the, the crowd uh, crowd reactions to Reigns, I thought, got better throughout the match. I don't know if that's actually the crowd or WWE <laughs> figuring out a way to manipulate with you. the audio. But I like this match. I thought it was decent. It was a good opener. Like With Raw, again, you're always expecting a 15-minute fucking long talking segment at the beginning, just like SmackDown's been as well. But to get an actual... Like, like 15, 20 minute long match out of two main eventers. Yeah. I honestly miss this. So they, that's awesome. They started with a match. That's what we need to do. Yep. <laughs> I mean, they did, like, they did in. like five, six minutes of talking. Uh, yeah. Bray's little promo before Roman came out, but it wasn't the typical. That's a wrestler promo. Start the match. Let's go. Right. Pretty much. Yep. Uh, let's talk the, the Enzo cast, uh, situation going on. Enzo in his little interview, uh, was, a cr- uh, having a, 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 a bit of a crush on Charlie, the interviewer there. <laughs> Uh, Enzo doesn't know who's attacking them. Cass doesn't know who's attacking. He denies any involvement. Later in the show, Cass gets attacked, and he hands Enzo Ooh. one of Enzo's chains, so insinuating that Enzo may have something to do with whatever's going on. So uh, back and forth stuff there. I don't know if it's tied to it, but the Corey Graves stuff was ongoing with uh, mm-hmm. with uh, Kurt, Angle. A- Kurt Angle during I the show. I think that's going to be separate. I think it's going to be too. its own story. But we had du- also during that part of it, it, uh, the uh, revival more blatantly in the background <laughs> this time, and that of course was when the uh, the the blatant uh, re-enter into the building from uh, uh, Dean Ambrose was uh, during one of those segments as well. So, uh, who is behind the the Enzo and Cass thing? Is it Cass on Enzo? Enzo on Cass? I I don't think we should break up Enzo and Cass. To be honest, what do you guys think about it? I mean, they're money makers, but I I just don't see a future if they're just going to keep. They're just going to use them like uh, like New Day, but without winning titles. Like that, they're just trying to make money off them. I think they're going to be better. And like Taco was saying earlier, put Enzo in the two hundred five live. I mean, he's got the personality to jump that up a notch. But he doesn't have the in ring skill mm. to hang at two hundred five. Yeah, <laughs> and he, he said he, some work. He's a heavyweight. It's, it's, he's two hundred six. He said on, <laughs> on Raw. First off, it was Rikishi. He did it for the Rock. <laughs> But absolutely <laughs> right. <laughs> this was actually another thing that Jericho brought up was like Enzo would be perfect for 205 because, you know, he's energy. He's, you know, a showpiece. He's, kind of, you know, he is a whipping boy, but 
he he definitely gets eyes drawn on him. You know, of you know, word was Vince McMahon hated this fucking guy, but the guy couldn't fucking shut up, so they <laughs> gave him a chance. And you know, they're selling some of the most you know most merchandise in the shop WWE dot com. Right, right. And the- I I just like the idea of them together. It's just yeah. you know, we don't you can have guys as a stable and not you know have them go for singles or have them be a mouthpiece. What's wrong with the fucking having a mouthpiece? That's you need what I was more mouthpieces say is, is, in the is, WWE. Is he he would be a great manager slash mouthpiece. Slash advocate for Big Cass, he, who's not as good of a doctor. If he to put the fucking gloves on, go scrap in the ring, <laughs> let him go do it, you know, because, you know, it's just, they're Jersey boys, but at the same time, you're going to have that scrappy guy fucking yapping, 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 oh, go, 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 big dog, we'll take care of him for me, kind of stuff. We're, we're trying to get this guy to wrestle too much. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk Alexa Bliss and wanting to be done with Bailey. Angle says the, uh, the, the, this is your life thing was the worst thing ever on Monday Night Raw. <laughs> I was agreeing 100% with. Kurt Angle there, and he says, "Hey, didn't you didn't you promise Nia Jax a match? You're going to have a match with Nia Jax." So they have the match. Bliss uh, Bliss is looking for friends, and I was uh, I'd forgotten that <laughs> we're supposed to like Dana Brooke. Oh yeah, Dana Brooke's a baby face. <laughs> uh, nobody wants to be uh, on Alexa Bliss's side, and they say they're going to be at ringside. So of course, uh, the uh, the interference comes into play when Alexa Bliss uh, dupes the other baby faces into attacking her, causing the disqualification. So we'll get some ongoing stuff here with Alexa Bliss and the Nia Jax thing. Uh, any other thoughts on that stuff going on? Honestly, the best I saw Nia Jax in the ring. Like, she was tolerable. You know, it wasn't sloppy. She actually seemed to be on point. A yeah, m- so. month or so at the Performance Center might have helped <laughs> a little bit. She's been off TV for a little bit, I suppose. Well, I know uh, her and Alexa are kind of roadmates, too, I guess. So, you know, it kind of helps when, you know, they kind of know each other, too, in the ring. And probably, you know, adds more comfort to her. I was just, I was so fucking nervous on Raw because Nia Jax came out. She had a big old fucking shitting grin on her face. I was like, oh god, it's gonna happen tonight, isn't it? She's oh, not much no. of a good actor or actress. No, is she? and uh, <laughs> I think she was just happy back being back on TV. But you know. Right, she was throwing some shade on Twitter, too, talking about how at least the SmackDown uh, women's yeah. division uses all their talent. So. Hey, we got <laughs> four women tonight. On Monday, <laughs> you, you just killed the you killed the conversation. Yeah, fucking, <laughs> go watch Cars, Fuck Joe. Go watch Cars. <laughs> um, Fine. We, sorry, we had <laughs> you caught me off guard. It was my fault completely. I take complete responsibility for that. One. Absolutely right. I'll give you all old fashioned so fast. <laughs> Old fashioned? What is what is an old fashioned? Is that what the hell's wrong with you? That's open hand slap, huh? <laughs> Five across the face. We had uh, uh, another good gold dust promo. I thought I yeah, enjoyed yeah. that. I am not liking the R Truth ones as much. They don't. I, they, They're I don't, so him. <laughs> they are him, but he's I feel that's like, the problem. <laughs> yeah, and and the movie lines from him. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. It is what it I is. I mean, we'll get a match out of him, but like like we've said before, let's just hope. I want to see heel gold dust, and I want. Want to just see a little run? I don't need a title. Just give him, give him some wins. Uh, Kalisto uh, took on Titus. Literally, this was <laughs> fast forward material. There. Did you really have to fast forward long? Uh, not very long, no. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I did see catch. I caught the finish. Oh, Kal- damn. Kalisto won. Yeah, uh, with the tights uh, because Titus uh, won with the tights the week before. Uh, Tozawa scouting the Titus brand as we talked about <laughs> earlier. Uh, maybe Titus will show up on Twitter. There was a good uh, photo online of Tozawa watching that match live and just said, uh, watching in English. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so uh, with with Cass out of the picture, he had to find a partner, and it was the Big Show. I actually really liked this. This was thing. really fun. This was a cool use of the Big Show. Uh, I could have done without him doing the the the, the, the accent and, and stuff in the <laughs> promo. It was okay though. Uh, so the uh, Big Show and Enzo uh, get a win over Anderson and Gallows. I liked Anderson and Gallows on Twitter. Think, oh, this is this is bullshit. The Big <laughs> Show? Are you serious? Uh, so uh, that was good. I like. Yeah, I enjoyed yeah. that. Uh, the Heyman uh, stuff uh, in, in there with uh, Samoa Joe. Samoa Joe, wow, so good, mm-hmm. such a good promo. Uh, we were talking about uh, talking Raw after uh, after the pay per view uh, uh, last week, and Samoa Joe was awesome on there. Again, just as good on Monday. Talking about, I'm envy. Hell, I'm envious of Brock <laughs> Lesnar. I want his schedule. I want Paul Heyman. <laughs> so <laughs> I re- I got a kick out of that. I really like yeah. that Heyman coming out the back and. Fourth, 
talking about how uh, Heyman is, is worried that Lesnar might be overlooking Samoa Joe because uh, Heyman knows who Samoa Joe is and, and what he brings to the table. So I like all of that. Samoa Joe putting uh, taking out Paul Heyman with the Coquina Clutch and then Heyman later on calling Lesnar and saying, yeah, we got to make a statement next week. So Just the way, that. just his tone of voice when he's in Paul Heyman's ear, like uh, something bad is about to happen to you. And I want, you, you know, just that tone of evil, you know, that Samoa Joe can pull out at any moment whenever he wants. I was yeah. telling Joe earlier, I'm glad that segment didn't happen somewhere in like, like Jersey or New York or, or Chicago or something because that... I felt that the segment in the corner when he was just talk- whispering in Heyman's ears yeah. was a little bit. It was it was awesome for us on the TV because we can kind of hear what he was saying, but you could tell that crowd was kind of like, "Huh, yeah, what the fuck? Let's yeah. start making noise." And you know, if that was like a fucking Philadelphia crowd, that would have been fucking exploded in a second. Yeah, but yeah, that was I really liked that touch of him. No microphones. Mm-hmm. It was just here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna wrap my arm <laughs> around your neck. You're gonna feel this, and then you're gonna go to sleep. And then you're going to explain it in the way that only you can to Brock Lesnar about what that feels like. So, yeah, that was awesome. Rollins versus Samoa Joe in the main event. Another good main, uh, good match. We had a couple of really good matches on Raw. Uh, Samoa Joe, of course, getting the win with the Coquina Clutch. Uh, I, I was disappointed because it, only for the fact of, well, they're not going to have Rollins win in this situation, uh, but a nice, good, competitive match. Oh, impre- I thought the match was great. Right, and an, an impressive uh, Falcon Arrow from Rollins on Samoa Joe for a near fall. Uh, the the uh, and the Wyatt dis- quote unquote distraction uh, yeah. led to the finish in in there. So we'll get something between Rollins and Wyatt possibly at some point, as well as uh, Finn Balor, I reckon. Uh, mm-hmm. In there as well in the mix because of what uh, the the promos that were cut last month there so I don't know any other stuff on that from Raw I don't know yeah. oh, solid Raw though I mean let's talk a less solid SmackDown <laughs> change the subject SmackDown live I'm going to make this a tag team So, beginning of the show, Shane reveals the new uh, women's money in the bank case. I said, if it's pink, we riot. <laughs> Thank God it wasn't. Uh, Naomi says uh, she's ready. And again, I, I also pointed the fact out uh, as we were watching SmackDown that last week, these women were at each other's throats. They couldn't keep them off of each other until they all murdered each other and threw Natalia through a table. People were thrown into posts and stairs. There was something on the line. Everyone was killing each other. This week, they're all standing in the ring and being peaceful and talking to each other in microphones so that was a bit strange uh but the, he reveals the case naomi comes out says she's ready she wants to be in the match but then lana comes out demands to be in the match shane says you haven't earned it yet you don't get anything and we were all disappointed we're like where's the where what's don't we usually get something Holla. don't we get, we didn't get a hollow moment for lana she came out and got in naomi's face naomi was all like uh uh getting crazy because i plan on snatching a ball <laughs> Slash your balls. But we did ha- we did have the moment later in the show. Well, of course it was Lana that led to Naomi. Uh, well, she came out and tripped Naomi. Did it wrong, I thought, because as you said, in ring gear. Right, she came out in her ring gear, the blue dress, uh, because she's on SmackDown. Uh, she came out, tripped uh, Naomi during the uh, the, sp- the six woman match, the re re rematch from the pay per view that we've seen several <laughs> times, uh, that causing Natalia, Tamina, and Carmella to win. To me, no. gets the win with the super kick over, uh, over Naomi. So this makes Naomi very upset. She goes to Kurt Angle in the back, who's so busy dealing with all the Corbin nonsense and whatnot. Uh, uh, she demands not only that she face Lana at Money in the Bank, but it, uh, she's willing to put the title on the line. So Lana, who danced her way onto SmackDown Live, <laughs> gets a title shot at Money in the Bank. So deservedly. Uh, what are your thoughts on, the, <laughs> on that? I, I kind of, I don't know, I, I, I like it, but I don't like it. I like that they're excited for the ladder match, but I don't like how they're like, ah, I, I'm so excited for this ladder match. It's like the ladder matches are some of the most brutal matches in, you know, in the business. And it's just like them being like, oh, I'm so excited. I want to be in this. Oh, it's just like, 
God, they need some yeah. fear in them on this. That aspect to it is is strange. Um, like, I don't want but, fucking Mick Foley crying at them in the middle of the ring. Like, <laughs> experience the fear of the ladder match. You know, I don't want that shit going on. But, but they just seem too happy to be in a ladder they, match. They want to be part of history. But yeah, you're right. It should be more. And and granted, the the promos that the that the women cut in the ring as they were going around taking turns talking. You know, it, it was. This is where I say something. It, it was it was Charlotte. You know, saying. Look, I'm going to beat everybody and, and be, 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 win the money in the bank. Becky Lynch, I'm going to beat everybody and win money in the bank. So th- there was that aspect to it, too. Uh, but what about Lana getting the title shot here? <laughs> God. I hope for the best. You know, you can you can only hope for the best. Well, spe- but for her debut? I like that she got a title shot before um, Rusev. <laughs> <laughs> and where is Rusev? <laughs> Where's American Alpha? Who has taken American Alpha and Rusev hostage? We have to get the fashion police on the case. <laughs> fashion Popo. Speaking of the fashion no, man. Popo, that was awesome. This These guys week. are doing so great. Yeah. I cannot wait. You, you know there's got to be a program in the future. I don't care who's champions, most likely New Day. <laughs> but New Day versus Brizongo. I mean, it's... Well, just comedy new, goal. New day in that environment, like being confused when it when they suddenly they they're in black and white now. Uh, you know <laughs> that was great. Talking to each other in their minds. <laughs> right, right. Why aren't they saying anything? What's going on here? <laughs> so yeah, that was just great. Uh, yeah, the the, the 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 conversation between was it the colognes cologne? It wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't the colognes cologne. Cologne cologne. Cologne cologne. Yeah. <laughs> So, oh, the clones. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, uh, Fashion Police killing it. Uh, uh, the New Day, awesome. The Usos, another good promo from the Usos. It was a little a little shoddy early. I'm like, Ugh, so that <laughs> felt a little scripted. But I, I thought they I thought they ended it nicely mm. and uh, and looked good. I, I, I'm really enjoying what the Usos have been uh, have been doing lately. Fuck yeah, they're age as fuck. Uh, AJ got his win back <laughs> over <laughs> Dolph Ziggler with the Styles Clash. This compared to last week's match, this just felt like a uh, a showcase for AJ Styles. They, it was Ziggler trying to get the cheap wins with the holding the ropes mm-hmm. and the tights and stuff, but AJ uh, overcoming the odds as it were and getting the win. Uh, Mojo wants into Money in the Bank. Uh, Shane, who came around the corner and just kind of ran into his uh, <laughs> Andre the Giant trophy, was he had this look on his face like, what the hell is this thing doing here? And who is this? What is Mojo? And the, the whole time Mojo is talking to Shane. Shane has this look, and he's not even—he's not looking at Mojo. He's like looking at the wall. He's not interested, <laughs> and he doesn't. He's just like, "Yep, mm-hmm, yeah, that's great." Yeah, and you're Mojo, all right? <laughs> he did not want to have a conversation with Mojo, so he gives Mojo a chance against Jinder. Uh, Jinder, of course, uh, got the win. I, I don't know what Jinder's uh, uh, finisher is, but Clash of the Titans. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> He got the win. I miss that voice. <laughs> uh, for half a second, I won't lie. I legitimately thought that Tom Phillips was Marl for just that <laughs> right at the beginning. And I like, m- like my heart dropped for like half a second. Mm-hmm. And then Tom started talking. I was just sad. Yeah, yeah. I like where Mojo's coming from this, though. You know, you're, you, you're the Andre the Giant you know, champion. You were just fucking stomping all over Jinder Mahal two weeks, two months ago. Right. It, and he brought that it, up. And it, his... You know, and the, the ladder match got announced, and I was honestly kind of shocked that he wasn't on there. You know, it's a you know it's a stellar lineup for a ladder match, but it's like fucking Corbin's still getting a fucking push, and what right. the fuck has he done since he won? Not a <laughs> goddamn thing. And I don't know, at least Mojo seems like he's trying. <laughs> well, and he was sending out tweets and, like, I'm sure, again, part of the WWE program, but just, I'm waiting, Shane McMahon, and he's just fucking chucking, you know, weight balls. He's just doing workouts. Like, I'm ready to go. (laughs) (laughs) What did you think of the artist video for Shinsuke Nakamura? I was a little worried that they might be changing his music or whatever, but uh, overall, I thought it was a cool video. So Yeah, it was fun to watch. Again, you... As much as you watch him on NXT, you got to catch up all the SmackDown viewers on his history, what he's done, who he's fought, you know? Indeed. Then the main event, Kevin Owens versus Shinsuke Nakamura, who we were just talking for the about. first time ever. ever. Except for when they faced each other at Ring of Honor and it was Shh. Kevin Steen. Uh, look that one up. It's a very good match. Just you shut your mouth. <laughs> uh, I should mention before the match, it was supposed to be Sami Zayn on commentary, but uh, he was getting interviewed and uh, she asked, how do you prepare? And uh, apparently he prepares by not only watching film, but getting beat up by Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin says he did the announcer's 
a favor so that the Sami Zayn didn't have to be out there, and Corbin is out there for commentary. Now this, I, I didn't like Corbin being out there for commentary because it distracted me, the viewer, from wanting to see Nakamura in his first singles match on SmackDown. That being said, I wasn't impressed by the match either. It just felt like a normal WWE mm-hmm. paint by numbers match. Well, and it it kind of felt a little sloppy just because again, Owens is working with a broken thumb tonight. I did not know that. I, I did see him taping it up in the back. Yeah, but they, they, tweeted they, he tweeted out he broke his thumb that, but that he's not going to be missing any time. I'm going to say dis like. Not technically broken, but he messed it up pretty bad. But what I'm saying about th- this match, and you're right, uh, but uh, it was generic. It was yeah, it was just formulaic. Like you, yeah, you look what Samoa Joe and Rollins did the night before, and it's just like, damn, that was a great fucking main event. And then this one had fucking hype behind it all week. We've right. been sa- you know sal- salivating Hyped over it, up it for a week. We talked about the previous match mm. for, at Ring of Honor. No, this is the first time, and we were we, we were all expecting something big, but I don't, there weren't really any dramatic back and forth near falls it was a just a basic comeback nakamura gets the win with the kinshasa after the reverse exploder and uh, defeats the united states champion of america and they it was it was almost done too quickly they had to like waste two minutes of time <laughs> after the match corbin of course attacks nakamura with the end of days after the match and they had to show that highlight four or five times to to fill time after almost the match. flipped so, them all the way around I was gonna say, it was probably one of my favorite end of days to see though because like nakamura Murrow's legs are so fucking long and lanky. <laughs> so it's just in the I thought he was going to go all the way around and hit Naito's <laughs> Destino move. <laughs> so, yeah, that was a close call for Corbin, I thought. But, uh, yeah, like I said, uh, uh, it could have been, been much better. So, anyway, let's move on. Let's talk. Guess who's back? It's Lucha Underground. Yes. Subject. Yes! C! C! Everybody's thinking I'm <laughs> racist, but this is actually how Lucha Underground opens this Metalachi. week. Metalachi! La Cucaracha. I'm not just playing it because it's a Lucha thing. This is how the show started. Uh, I'm not a racist. <laughs> exactly, <yes. laughs> Let me find it. I gotta find it. I'm gonna find it. Uh, Joe is so a black how- man. Really? <laughs> <laughs> did you learn that from Cars 2? I did. <laughs> Tomato. Where the hell did he go? He's gone. I said he was going to find it, and then I didn't find it. No, honey, uh, dicked us. I guess I did. So, how would you rate Taco? I think I was, how would you rate that first episode? I liked it, man. Anything? I'm just fucking surprising. still waiting. What is your submission hold? <laughs> the I couldn't find it. I don't know where it is. It's gone. Uh, Lucha Underground back the uh, uh, mid season premiere. All, yeah, man. All night long between Johnny Mundo and Mac for the Lucha Underground Championship. Iron Man rules, of course, mm-hmm. uh, taking place. Did either of you actually get a chance to see this show? Yeah. Awesome. Hell awesome. yeah. Now, I wanted to talk about this nope. because with the uh, Access TV thing coming up, I've been looking into alternatives to uh, uh, cable and satellite. That's awesome, because I, I do actually wanted to bring up something along the same lines. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, I've been looking at, I currently have direct. TV. So I have Access TV. I have El Ray, although it's in low def. I have Pop, also in low def for uh, you Impact fans out there. <laughs> and of course, I've got the USA Network. Mm. Uh, I was looking into Sling TV. Now they have all of those networks except for Pop, and I'm not. Uh, uh, I don't care. <laughs> they also have a cloud DVR service, which is good for me because I don't always get a chance to watch. You want to be shows. careful on which device you're doing that with, though. They're still wor- rolling that out. Right. I was going to do the. First free trial, but what I wanted to mention uh, regarding the Access TV and the New Japan stuff, Mm -hmm. we're talking Lucha Underground here, of course, but we're kind of throwing out all the (laughs) subjects here. Uh, With the uh, the New Japan thing on Access on July 1st, uh, that whole day, they're going to be running like a marathon of the New Japan show on Access stuff. So if you don't have Access now, or you don't have one of these you know, uh, over the top streaming gimmicks, you could do a, a free trial for uh, of the Sling TV. Access TV is a part of that. You can watch the you can watch the the the, 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 the New Japan stuff all day, then watch the G One special live, mm-hmm. and you can get caught up on all the stuff that we've been talking about New Japan wise, and uh, kind of get up to speed on what's going on in New Japan, and then watch that awesome uh, live show with Jim Ross and Josh Barnett doing commentary. But Taco, getting back to what you were saying, this is honestly a long 
along the same lines I actually wanted to bring up earlier on the week on the show was like, you know, um, I've been using Sling TV for probably almost you know a couple months now and okay. it just started uh i i was using it on my cell phone to watch you know raw because you know uh they do have the cheapest option towards the usa you know network okay. it's uh i believe it was 25 bucks a month just for their uh st- standard package that has usa on yep, there yep. and uh, i think that's the orange package i could be wrong on that There's an orange and a and, blue I think. and um yeah you get access to um l rate network on that package um uh Access, access is on there too as well and i kind of fucked around with sony uh the view um i was gonna say you have the I, playstation I, I've, view I've, one I've looked, too, didn't I've you? looked into the hulu one that's out now uh youtube has a ch- uh, tv show thing going on okay. there's been rumors that apple's trying to work on something like this too so you know a lot of these companies are trying to work on this uh this cable provider of uh, Direct TV even has one now too. Uh, so all of these guys are trying to start something like this. Right on. Yeah. I have found just from from having cable back in the day, uh, kind of fucking around with these other streaming services that Sling TV is honestly the cheapest option to get USA Network and uh, loot, especially uh, L Ray Network. I'm yeah. a huge nut for L Ray Network outside yeah. of Lucha Underground. It's definitely one of my favorite channels. And you know, it, is L Ray in high def? On it the- is. That's also oh, what I was going to get to. That's even an upgrade uh, for me. A lot of these. You know other networks like uh, Sony View. I don't even think they have L Ray, right, but uh, right. uh, like Hulu and whatnot. Like in order to get the uh, the L Ray network, you're gonna ha- you're gonna have to go into their higher tiers, right, right? And it's like at that point, you might as well get Comcast or you know Directv, whoever else you're gonna have to do. Which you're still gonna have to go in their higher tier to get you know those kind right, of channels. Right. So yeah, Sling TV is the best option you know to get you know for wrestling fans out there. And you know they they even have other packages where you know you add five 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 or whatever. Yeah, to get you these can channels kind of customize it a little bit. They, they they do have a deal out there where it's like you get these four channels for ten bucks. It's like well fuck yeah cool. And it's like Spike TV, MTV, and right, all this right, stuff. Yeah. So yeah, and you know I know a lot of people back in the day said they had streaming issues with them and whatnot. It's like who fucking doesn't? But right. you know I I, I have T-Mobile. Um, fucking endless plugs here, right? Not <laughs> get, I'm not getting paid for this shit. But hey, I, you know, just, I just switched to T-Mobile too, and I think awesome. a lot, I think a lot of people are because they got that you know two lines for a hundred mm-hmm. bucks unlimited. You well, know, they, so. they have that that binge on thing where you know yeah. you watch certain programming on there and they don't charge your your uh, minutes. That your shit does slow down up to thirty gigabytes to warn people. I fucking <laughs> hit that every month, no problem. But overall, you don't get charged extra but that's, stuff. But that's because but you don't you don't have Wi Fi. I don't, don't have no you're, internet. You're watching I don't raw, have cable or anything. You're so you're watching all of your wrestling pretty much on your phone. What, I. For- I I, 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 I'm actually work. using my phone as a hotspot now right. because I, I recently learned that <laughs> using your phone as a hotspot on like a laptop to watch like a Sling TV, they don't charge you. So I'm able to watch my Raw on my big screen TV every Monday night. Too sweet. I'm able to watch you know WWE Network you know with the pay per views you know on my TV you know, with my hotspot and not really worry. So like for a cheapest option to watch wrestling, honestly, T-Mobile and Sling TV are is like the best. That way you know I can just Justify you know getting WWE Network. I can justify right. spending another nine, ten bucks on fucking New Japan. Well, that's that's why. I mean, I, that's what fucking Directv is great, but it, it, man, it's, it's expensive. It is. So we've been talking about getting rid of that and just just doing something simpler, especially with me with all these fucking wrestling subscriptions and shit now. So yeah, I because um, I, I, I I do the the the. F- the quad package for ten extra bucks, and I think my bill is the uh, it's thirty five or forty five bucks. Yeah, a month. that's what I was looking into. That Sling TV and, is such a good. And they are option. working on the DVR option right now. I've been I've been really eyeballing it because like I have to watch it all the old school way. I yeah. have to watch it live or else you know I'm not watching it. Well, when, um, when I do the trial, because I'm we're, we're gonna we're, we're taking a vacation uh, this week, and mm-hmm. then uh, we're gonna look more into it, which. Uh, we probably won't get rid of DirecTV anytime soon because like we're ten episodes behind on Better Call Saul because <laughs> I've been watching the fucking New Japan. But they Cup. also have like on demand on there. Like you can't on demand Raw, but like Lucha right, Underground, right. they usually have you know, um, like last week's episode will have commercials on it, but then the the previous episodes before that, they're just you can binge watch them. So well, what I super saw awesome. when I was just doing a little bit of research on it for the DVR, it was like fifty hours, and there's like the only one. It's only for five bucks, 
Right, and the and the only uh, stuff you can't, the only channels you can't DVR, DVR, I think, are like the ESPN ones and ABC. Mm-hmm. So pretty much everything else is game. So it's just a matter of and how well does it work. Pretty much like if you do want ESPN too, you have to go with their other package. Right, right. So it's either it's twenty dollars or it's twenty five dollars. I have the twenty five. So yeah, my bill is about thirty five bucks a month and then tax. I was looking at if you do. I think, yeah, I did the, do the original one, the, the DVR, and then like something with the spike or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's still like less than 50 bucks or yep. right around that, which is That's what I have. crazy it's, better I have than MTV, what I'm paying for spike, direct TV. Uh, fucking Boomerang, because I love cartoons. So yeah. A, yeah, they ha- it's a select four package, but it's like if you get one package, you might as well get you know the, all four of them for another five bucks. <laughs> Joe's bored. Let's get back <laughs> to Lucha Underground. Hey, Joe, we're trying to save you some fucking money. Go I watch cartoons. I was going to throw in at the end. <laughs> I'm working on my own Wi-Fi. The problem I have with Go ahead. It, have is I have Comcast and basic cable, and it's just because I've gone so many years with Comcast, the price is just way too much. Yeah. I'm looking into CenturyLink possibly and Sling so that – because CenturyLink offers me a low enough – price on just wi-fi they don't have to yep. they, i think they have the prism tv now or anything but yeah. i just don't want a tv service let alone any kind of dish service yeah, honestly myself. it's like you can find you know a decent cable ser- or internet service out there for like 60 bucks a month and then another you know like i said i'm at 35 dollars not including the dvr so when that comes out let's just right. say 40 dollars if you switch awesome. from comcast to uh you know uh uh, what the century link or whatever you switch from cable to uh, what is it dsl or whatever basically uh whatever your new whatever you're switching to is going to give you like a really good upfront deal for like a year or two or whatever mm-hmm. and then they'll jack the price up after that but uh yeah generally speaking anytime you switch something you're going to get a deal even if you try to cancel they'll send you to, to uh, oh it's just you gotta uh, know when your promo ends and you call them and they give you a new promo that's right, all you gotta right. do yeah i've tried three times with three separate people on the phone have not got a fucking wow, new promo you Suck at being on the phone. You got to spend like two <laughs> hours on the. You got to. You got to commit no, an afternoon. Oh, dude, I've, spent some, I've spent some time. Fuck those people. Oh, All they right, upgrade my shit for me. Lucha Underground, Mundo versus Mag, <laughs> <laughs> for the third time. All night long. All, All night long. All night. <laughs> <laughs> nice. The last time I nice. sing on this show, uh, no, be. <laughs> this was fun. Uh, <clears throat> what a start! Excuse me, <laughs> uh, Johnny Mundo gets the first fall early with the end of the world. That's the seated uh, moon salt in the corner. Gets a second uh, fall with a leverage pin using the ropes. Uh, the crowd chants bullshit. Uh, and the, <laughs> the announcers bring up the fact that there's another ref at ringside. Why isn't he saying anything? And of course, they came to the inc- the conclusion because it's Lucha underground and it's a stipulation match it must be these nuts and it goes oh we're gonna get so much more use out of that now (laughs) uh mac gets his first fall with a power bomb so at this point we're two to one uh mundo sells the his leg after a spectacular top rope spinning dive to the floor so uh because he hurt his leg uh they determined that he's injured we gotta bring the stretcher in and get him out of here so they're stretchering him out uh, they go to commercial the clock continues to wind mundo again ahead two to one at this point <laughs> um Come back from commercial, he kips up out of the stretcher and low blows and hits a DDT onto the backboard on the Mac and gets another one, two, three. Now, yes. Ma- now, uh, Mundo up three to one. <clears throat> After that, they battle up the stairs. <clears throat> With the backboard, Mac gets the advantage, straps Mundo into the backboard, and pushes him down the stairs. <laughs> Hits a stunner and gets his second point. PJ Black comes out disguised as Johnny Mundo and leads Mac on a chase around the ring. Son of Habit <laughs> comes out and evens the odds, knocks on Dario's door and says, We need help. We need water. No, no, no. We need beer. Dario gives him two <laughs> cans of Modelo. Uh, Son of Havoc dumps the Modelo on, onto uh, the Mac, revives him and now he wants revenge. Uh, Mundo <laughs> demands that the band play and Sexy Star dives uh, uh, on him in disguise. Sexy Star playing in the band in disguise, mm-hmm. diving onto Johnny Mundo. Uh, Mac hits a shoulder driver through the tables to even the score late in the match. Mundo goes for the end of the world on a ladder. Mac moves out of the way. Mac hits a big splash off the top of the ladder through a table in the closing seconds, but time runs out and Mundo retains because it's tied 3-3. Three. Uh, Dario Cueto comes out and says, not so fast. Oh, he was pissed. We're not going to end it like this. So next week it will be one fall to a finish for the championship. So that was Lucha Even if it goes 
all night long. <laughs> it could go all night <laughs> again, but it's one fall to the finish uh, next week. Yeah, but what a start, though, man. It was, was fun. Fuck it was, yeah. It was, it was like, it was a, That's it, why I love that shit. It's just, it's fun. It's ridiculous. Balls like, to the wall. Well, balls some to the wall. intro shows, like even coming back mid-season, they're just throwing as much crap as as they can at you with this you've got you got a few people involved but the main match is just two guys it, it yeah it made mac look really good too it yes. gave him so much more cred and <laughs> showed what... dumping the modello on him <laughs> yes <laughs> firing up and hitting stunners and shit just cool. like my, my girlfriend does not like wrestling at all and like lucha underground lures her in because it's just <laughs> it's so far-fetched it's so wacky it's yeah. insane it's just like I, you know, I, I still look at you know pro wrestling still like like a carny mindset. I guess you know yeah. this is like to me it should be like a show, not like a a put like South Park. You know, did it like a Shakespearean play almost. <laughs> you know, uh, that's how it you know it should be. It's just fun, chaotic at time. You know, like good humor and when you can see that combination of stuff just being played right. You know, so right. You know, um, I actually got to go to a local event this weekend and they oh, hit we didn't all even bring that up, the yeah. marks on like that. So it's just like you know, and I brought you know um three of my friends with two of them are not wrestling fans one of them she knew what to expect it was um it was wrestle palooza x uh, it was first wrestling uh at a uh, um at first, at first ave. ave uh so you know something that you know davari came from there and um yep. um I, I you know i guess i'll talk about it go, go but, right um, into it right. but uh, it, it was really cool because uh eric cannon he's the one that kind of puts this on <laughs> <laughs> He, he he just didn't like the scene in uh, Minnesota uh, for wrestling, so you know he he worked at he works at First Ave. He got the okay from the bosses to put on a, a wrestling show, and it, I I don't I it was second or third one I went to, and you know he said at that you know at night he was like yeah you know back in the day there was three four hundred people here watching now wrestling now they're selling it and out it's a packed crowd sold out you know and yep. uh, they bring and bring uh, big names and you know it was so humbling to see you know something like this you know explode to where it is and you know it, it was personally awesome for me to bring you know my friends the one that you know she worked at first Ave as well so she yeah. knew what to expect but you know my girlfriend was with and then uh my friend her boyfriend was with and both of them not wrestling fans at all and i was just like i just wanted to bring them to a wrestling show to kind of bring them in my role a little bit yeah yeah. And, you know, they were having a fucking great time. They oh, loved yeah. every single minute of it. My girlfriend was fucking louder than I was at times. <laughs> you know, you know that made me happier just seeing non-wrestling fans fucking let loose and enjoy the show that was going well, and it's, on. It's, it's such like a, a rock concert type of, well, it's a rock venue, rock concert mm-hmm. venue, and that and it's that type of atmosphere. Yeah, Eric Cannon's a very big punk rocker, PBR sponsor and everything, yep. and, you know, they had hip-hop going, burlesque shows are going on yep. and everything, but... You know, it, it's just awesome to see, and they even had, they even did a um, a free show down on uh, Lindell downtown Minneapolis. You know, they put on an outside performance the day after with most of these stars. Yeah, too. I saw that too. Um, yeah. But like Joey Ryan was there, uh, uh, Gr- uh, Grotto was there, uh, fucking. Um, mm- uh, <laughs> Anderson was supposed to be there, uh, Ken Anderson, but oh, his, uh, he, he had some travel issues, right. and then Aerostar was supposed to be there, but he had some visa issues. Thanks, Trump. <laughs> <laughs> but Drago was there, so that was really cool to see some of these guys live, and since it was the uh, the 10th anniversary, um, they kind of brought everybody out from the back, you know, and kind of, dro- you know, dropped everything and played a video package, and, you know, it was Davari, you know, backstage of Raw saying, you know, if it wasn't for you, this is where I got my debut at and right, everything right. and you know this is where i got to learn my skill so you know, it was awesome seeing him you know just humble as fuck because you know they, they on our scene uh Devar and eric cannon they were the big rivals yeah they were the top so guys, you know yeah. that was really cool to see that you know cole cabana even had a thing in there uh, i think they, he was up for the last one yep, yep yep he he usually makes it up but not you know he's in ring of honor right now kind of doing that thing yep. and then you know uh fucking scott hall even had a thing video package nice. on there for him so it's just like uh, you know, a lot of guys from the the, the Chakra Chikra Chikara. Chikara. <laughs> Can't even <laughs> speak right. The Chikara wrestling, you know, because uh, they were big involvement too with it. So, yeah, there's a lot of good names. You know, you know, being like what you what you're doing here is amazing, and you know they're they're helping a lot of these talents and you know i i, I know um you know i kind of fucked around with you a little bit you know and i saw a f- you know a few faces there you know still training and you know yeah, so it's yeah. you know it's so great to see that and um right off the bat too is uh eric cannon put his belt on the line against uh um airwolf, airwolf was the yeah. kid's name 
And, you know, it was... I've heard some good things about this Airwolf. Very game, so. fun fucking match, you know, and it was just like, God damn, good show. I was kind of surprised that they were sh- starting the show off with Eric Cannon putting his belt on line against <laughs> this Airwolf. Um, of course, Eric Cannon, you know, retained his belt, and then, he, you know, he was like, hold up, hold up, everyone, you know, hold your, hold your applause, I gotta speak something, blood's pouring out his fucking forehead, of course, <laughs> but, uh, 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 Davari, uh, the older brother, and then uh, Molly Holly come out from the back, you know, wearing the, uh, the Academy shirt, they have sure, uh, their yep. own wrestling, uh, school out here with, uh, Anderson, yep. And um, Airwolf is the first graduate. Yep, and that's what they said. Um, you know, they just want to say, hey, this is, you know, our first graduate from the class. You know, we're super proud of him. And, yeah, man, this, you know, that's why I love this fucking business. It's just, you know, seeing that kind of stuff and, you know, kind of seeing, like, what Wrestlepalooza has blossomed into. And yeah, it's I haven't just, been to one in a long time. i got to get to another oh, one. Oh, hell yeah, January. Never been. They're doing it again. But it's, it's, it's fucking great seeing that shit, so... Right on. Well, let's let's get into some. We'll, get, well, let's shift back towards the WWE and uh, let's talk a little smack or uh, SmackDown. We already <laughs> talked SmackDown. Let's talk uh, NXT very quickly. Here. Change the subject. NXT. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's a keeper. So, I think Taco would be very upset knowing that you just played his voice and Coheed and Cambria in the same thing. <laughs> well, that is the old NXT intro that I have a, a little bit of... Joe, fun. better than cars. For real. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, speaking of new intros, NXT had another new intro this I week. I wasn't crazy good. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, yeah, that was... Uh, either, there, either they realized that the, the, the other new intro wasn't any good... Or they're doing more along the lines of what they've been doing with the takeover specials, where they just have a new band because they talked about the the like the new the the band that did whatever this new intro is. Mm. So maybe they're doing something where they're switching it Let's up more not often. Do that. So I don't so know. I'm kind of getting sick of Great Balls of Fire fucking logo being swapped every fucking week. <laughs> Make up your goddamn minds. Champa says before TakeOver, fans were ready to replace him because of the injury factor going into TakeOver. He felt a, a bigger injur- injury happen during the match, but he kept fighting. He blames the fans for his turn. He says, Chicago was my moment. He, pro- he promises to be the baddest son of a bitch when he comes back. He says, I am professional wrestling. A great promo Fucking from Champa. Awesome Everything. Promo. I just like the fact that they also point out that Johnny Gargano has not released any of his medical. They're keeping that nice and, you know, under the table just because it's going to be a while before we see the payoff for right, this. Right, right. But when we do, like, I mean, you know it's going to explode. Well, and I like the idea of Johnny Gargano selling an injury, but it's actually Champa that's <laughs> injured. And so the, but just keeping them off TV, keeping them separate, oh. and then hopefully, hopefully Champa's ready to go by uh, by by takeover in Brooklyn, but I think it's a pretty bad injury for yeah, Tampa, yeah. Isn't it? Was it tore, the, I think he tore. Was it the ACL? ACL yeah. or UCL? So yeah, he might be uh, eight, uh, eight eight nine months up to a year. Uh, so that's uh, that's oh, yeah. that's sad. Take your time and heal, though, man. That shit's serious injury there. Definitely, definitely. But thank goodness they've got the performance center and the great uh, the great mm. treatment down there, and this uh, tr- it's a tremendous facility. Uh, Pete Dunn took on Danny Birch. Uh, Pete Dunn wins with the bitter end. Uh, Birch with the early finger breaker spot, stealing a little uh, of Marty Skrull's uh, fire there. Uh, leads to open hand slaps and strong style. Uh, Birch gets some near falls with a punch and a headbutt, but Pete Dunn does get the win. I think a way but I I think this match was a better title defense than anything I saw with Tyler Bate. He had good, okay matches, but like nothing... Stole the show. Pete Dunn is like just taking it to another notch. Sure. He stole the show in the tournament to yeah. me. Yeah, yeah. Well, and Pete Dunn being the little, the more experienced of, of the two, of mm. course, between him and Tyler Bates. So, uh, yeah, I saw that Pete Dunn and Tyler Bate had a match somewhere for some indie promotion, and they switched gimmicks. So t- <laughs> Tyler Bate is, is wearing the bruiser weight gear, and he's got like a bear like finger painted on his knee. That's great. <laughs> and, uh, and, That's the, great. And, and Pete Dunn is just wearing the plain trunks and boots with no knee pads. I like that wrestlers can have fun like that yeah, nowadays. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Andrade Cien Almas took on Cesar Bonani, and Bonani win with the small package after Almas dominated the match. The end of this match. <laughs> the everything. Him breaking down and then just, 
I'm good. Yeah. yeah. Let's go party. Yeah. Yeah, I was so bummed that he lost. I was like, the fuck, really? And then I, see I was more bummed that he was angry. <laughs> I know. I was, he was mad. I was like, yeah, dude, I'm fucking. And he's like, yeah, fuck it. I'm like, yeah, fuck it, shit. <laughs> Tranquilo. <laughs> Tranquilo. Yeah. Uh, Ember Moon uh, uh, reigns on the iconic duo's uh, weird video with her uh, medical clearance. So Ember Moon will be coming back soon. Nikki Cross versus Ruby Riot versus Asuka in an elimination match in uh, two weeks. So technically one week from now. Oh, I was like, did I uh, miss that? So nope, that's gonna <laughs> that's coming up next week, not this week on NXT. Uh, Hideo freaks out after the takeover loss, and uh, Ono gets in his face. Ono makes amends in the parking lot, and it's going to be Itami versus uh, Oni Lorcan this week on NXT. I think that's going to be a good one. That should be really good, mm-hmm. even though Oni Lorcan will probably lose. Yeah, but he's number one. He is number one. He'll uh, he'll tell you as he makes his entrance. Yeah, Joe, what I tell you earlier, Perfect Ten always loses, too. Go watch cars. You know who else always loses? <laughs> Ha ha, Clinton Dix. <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> uh, main event from NXT, Roderick Strong and Cassius Ono <laughs> took on Eric Young and Alexander Roll Wolf. credits. <laughs> <laughs> Roll credits. I'm spent. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, Roderick Strong, Cassius Ono get the win. No Way Jose evens the numbers game, uh, and he's going to be taking on... I forgot Kill- he was gone. <laughs> yeah, he's been gone for a while. He was gone for a while. He made his appearance. He's going to be taking on Killian Dane this week I'm excited. on NXT. I think so. this week's NXT is a good good setup. Yep, yep, yep. I think that's going to do it for the show this week. Uh, if you want to hear more about uh, Ring of Honor, uh, I've got notes on that. We talk, I talked about that on Strong Honor, so check out Strong Honor good on the fans. Good main event. Dot com. Yeah, uh, Adam Cole taking on Hangman Page. Really good uh, match there. I so. really wasn't expecting that. <laughs> right, right, right. And, and in fact, I talked about this on Strong Honor. I just listened to a uh, an interview with the Young Bucks. And uh, they were saying how they're trying to build up this match between Adam Cole and Kenny Omega, even mm-hmm. though Adam Cole's contract is up and everything else. I mean, they could do that anywhere for any indie promotion, yep. obviously. Uh, That's but, a good money fight, though. Right, right exactly. Mm-hmm. And so with me just recently hearing that in inter- that interview, I'm thinking, well, of course Adam Cole's going to get the win over Hangman Page, <laughs> a low-level Bullet Club guy. But it was a fun, good, competitive match. Fuck yeah. So talked about that on Strong Honor. So check that out there. Uh, and, of course, Follow me on Twitter at Tommy Stryker, spell Stryker with a Y. Follow the the show on Twitter at BPW Podcast. And don't just follow. Join the conversation. Let's talk about wrestling. That's more. I, I'm not tweeting about stuff. I'm trying to tweet more, but I'm just not much of a tweeter. Uh, Joe's pretty good at tweeting. Mm. I love tweeting. Uh, but uh, check out the, uh, the, the the past episodes, links to Strong Honor, links to social media, all of the stuff at Best Pro Wrestling Podcast. Dot com. Taco, where can people find you? I can follow me on Snapchat, Twitter, at H-G-R-E-V Taco. And you can follow me, Joe, at Joe P-E-W-P. Yo, you son of a bitch. <laughs> you stepped all over his touchdown. <laughs> all over, I forget, man. I, I forgot you roll. I forgot you changed. Now, now I'm just, you know what? I'm going to do it out of, just, <laughs> out of spite. You can follow me at B-W-C-H-K-A-B-R-W-N. C O W or at Joe BPWP. Joe BPWP. That's going to do it for the best pro wrestling podcast. Bye. Peace. Peace. That's not what this show's about. Ha ha, Clinton Dix. Clash of the Titus. Yeah, man. That's right, geeks. I think you're a moron. <laughs>